What is happening, my people? It is I, Cool Cat Jack, and with me is my co-host, Logan. Welcome to the Knuckle Dragger's Guide to Culture. Are you looking for a way to show off your superior knowledge to those troglodytes that stumble and grunt around you? Do you want to be the smoothest conversationalist at your lunch break? Then get ready to be the master of superficial intelligence. Movies, music, books, TV shows, video games, history, politics, sexy cave women, and interrupting dogs. We have it all. The Knuckle Dragger's Guide to Culture. Because it's time to give your dome some love. Woo! I know, I nailed it on the second one. Hey, everybody. Hi. Yeah, we're back. Pretty early, too, I know. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. We went, well, you know, four months, and now we're waiting two days, and Mm -hmm. hopefully... We won't do four months again. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. (laughs) I got time. Anyway, so today we looked we looked at the movie Sniper with uh, Tom Berenger and Billy Zane. Came out in what was it ninety three? Ninety three. Came out to okay reviews from what I saw. Spoiler free. It's the story of a sniper pair that has to go assassinate some paramilitary drug cartel leader out in the jungles of Panama. It gets into all the tension and between the two characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a classic story of the old grizzled veteran and the new rookie that's in over his head. I also had an episode that came out earlier today. I don't know exactly when this video is going to be posted. I'll probably edit it tonight and then try to get it put up at least. If not tonight, then tomorrow morning. But I had something on uh, the second part to my uh, chicks and chain. You know, yeah. I'm also going to be looking into doing another Bible man thing because I've been wanting to do that. So to get into the movie. All right, so the movie starts out with a video camera in the jungle. Mm-hmm. We've got this uh, boat on a river, Panama specifically. They mentioned it's a Panama. And we have uh, Tom Berenger in a ghillie suit, which is an interesting thing to see. If you guys don't know what a ghillie suit is, it's what snipers wear. It's like those... That it looks like a fuzzy Chewbacca made out of plant stuff. Snipers will make them out of whatever materials and whatever environment they happen to be in. It's so they can blend into the foliage. Foliage. Lack thereof. Yeah. yeah. So this is a really interesting scene, though, because it starts out, we see the camera from the perspective of the sniper. We're actually mm-hmm. seeing the... Uh, through the scope. Yeah, through the scope. And uh, we see as the snipers point out their, their distance and measure out the shot. Tom with his spotter. They manage to make the shot. They shoot the guy. And then they, the uh, the bad guy's shooting into the, you know, the jungle. And they can't really find him. And they sort of vanish back into the jungle. Their mission goes successfully. Mm-hmm. Uh, on their way, their helicopter arrives early. Tom's character, uh, he's known as uh, Thomas Beckett. But I would just call him Beckett. Can't, they can't even give him a different yeah. name other than fucking Tom Berenger. Man. Yeah, Tom Berenger didn't get another name. This guy, honestly, uh, he's a perfect action hero because he mm. can't really act. Mm. Like, he doesn't... I mean, he does have his moments, but the man's face never seems to, like, emote. Well, I mean, he is supposed to be the grizzled veteran. Yeah, though, there's, so. there's a way to do... He definitely does stoic very well. Yeah. So anyway, so they're on their way for pickup. The helicopter shows up too early. Tom's not happy about this. Or, oh, he's yeah. he's pissed. Yeah, he's pissed because the sunlight's still out, and that basically is just a red flag shouting and screaming to anybody where their location mm-hmm. is. On their way to the helicopter, because they can't wait, unfortunately. I'm going to refer to him as Beckett from now on, mm-hmm. and I could make the joke that he's basically still Tom. He's also in Platoon, by the way, just throwing that out there. Yeah, He's really good in Platoon. So, uh, they get to the helicopter, they're on their way there. Fodder, uh, unfortunately, on his way to the helicopter, gets, he gets shot. shot through the neck. Pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, we get, uh, he gets shot by, uh, I, I ended up calling him Rings. You actually find out about who he is a little bit later on. The only reason I call him Rings is because he really, for most of the movie, all you see is the ring he has right. yeah. on his finger from the shots. He ends up shooting Beckett's spotter. Uh, I don't even think they gave him a name. No. But, I mean, he was pretty much dead from the start. Yeah. He just looked like a guy that was going to die. He could have just been saying, I love my family back home, pretty yeah. much. So, Beckett goes back and gets his body, brings him on the helicopter. They get away. He gets in a shouting match with the, the helicopter guy. And he's, he's not happy. Dog tag from his boot? Yeah, he takes Any... one of his dog tags and keeps them. So, Beckett keeps the tags of all his... Fallen spotters. Which he has a lot. He has a lot. <laughs> he has an entire keychain full. Yeah, this man is not very lucky, mm. I guess. he's He seems like the kind of person that's learned a lot of hard lessons. Yeah. You get that vibe from him. Later on, we get to see him taking a bath, because of course we do. In, in a truck bed yeah. with a tarp under it. <laughs> in a truck bed and a tarp. <laughs> and he starts having flashbacks to all the shots and stuff mm. he's making. At this point, it goes to uh, DC, where we meet our second guy, who was played by Billy Zane, uh, where Beckett... 
plays like a very stoic guy. Mm-hmm. Billy Zane's character Miller is kind of a whiny, very emotional prick. Prick. Yeah, he's kind of a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both kind of assholes. Though. Yeah, in their own special ways, but. But Billy's character really is in over his head. Yeah. And he thinks that this is just going to be a little mark in his career. In and he'll, out, you know. You know. He'll move on and move on with his life. Because mm-hmm. he, he has aspirations, right? Mm-hmm. So Miller is given this uh, overview by these guys in D.C. Uh, his new mission is to kill a guy named Alvarez. Another guy too, right? Well, that was uh, brought up later on. Alvarez is the main guy. There's another dude that can potentially kill. I think it was, uh, what was it? Or- Ortega? Ortega, yeah, something like that. But anyway, they're killing some drug lords in Panama, you know. Mm. So he takes the job, and on uh, while they're talking with the DC guys, one of them makes a point of saying, if Beckett compromises the mission, you may have to take him out. I don't know why they had that line. It really doesn't make any sense within the context of everything going on, because yeah. Beckett has never shown any indication that he can't get a he's job a loose, done. Yeah, he, no way that they show that he's a loose cannon. Yeah, this is one of the first things I kind of... If anything, gonna, he's more by the book than them. Yeah, he, he knows this jungle in and out. Yeah, I'm more... Nit, uh, this is one of the first things I kind of nitpick at because it doesn't make any sense that they would say this about Beckett because Beckett's been doing this job. He has... What was it like? They said he had like 63 confirmed kills. It was like 70-something. Or, yeah, like I think I wrote it down kills. somewhere. But like, this dude has an insane amount of kills. That's only confirmed. Yeah, that's confirmed kills. Like, we don't we don't even know if he yeah. has more. He may have more. So he's been doing this for a long, long time, and he always gets his job done. I think that scene was just put in there to spark a little rivalry between them, but, too. Yeah, kind the, of. yeah, something about, you know, establishing their tension. But, I mean, it was pretty much unnecessary because mm-hmm. right off the bat, they get off on the really... Like, yeah, they kind of yeah. butt heads right yeah. away. Miller is uh, in a helicopter on his way to Panama. Oh, boy. And uh, it doesn't go too well. But For most uh, of the people in the helicopter with him. Yeah, Beckett, at this point, by the way, just before this scene, is told about his new spotter, and Beckett's not happy about this. Oh, he's, he's really pissed off. Uh, he, he doesn't want Miller. He thinks Miller's, Miller doesn't have the experience that he wants. Yeah. Anyway, so we get to Miller on the helicopter on his way to their, their little base in Panama. He gets shot to, to shit. I mean, like, mm. one of the guys gets his face practically blown off. The other I guy. need to point out again that this is during the daytime. Yeah. You'd think they'd be doing helicopters at night. Why don't they do that? Yeah, <laughs> seems like they haven't learned that lesson. Yeah. During that whole thing, I think it gets established that he's never actually shot anyone, Miller. Mm. And during this whole situation, the gunner is shooting into the jungle. Uh, Miller has the guy in his sights. The gunner actually shoots the guy and gets shot himself and dies. The other guys think that he made the shot, mm-hmm. and he, he claims credit for the shot. Well, actually, no, he kind of, he does and he doesn't. He's like, yeah, yeah but he, a million. Yeah, he never denies it. Yeah, though, he never denies it. Yeah, right. So he, he takes credit for it, basically. This is one of the first things about um, Miller's character that we get into flaws with him. He's a glory chaser. Mm-hmm. It's very, very obvious from the start that he wants credit. He wants to move on with his, you know, his career. Whereas Beckett is the kind of guy that is just cold. He wants to focus on the mission, and he doesn't much care about anything else. Get the job done. Doesn't matter what you have to do. Miller gets to the base, and he has this uh, fight with a Marine out on the base. I guess it, this is where it kind of establishes something that uh, is an issue within the military. Like, a little bit of things to make clear before we go any further. I have not been in the military, never served in the military, but my older brother was in the Navy. And he kind of talks about, or he talked to me a little bit about some of the interpolitics between different branches. Yeah, different branches and different professions within the military. They often will talk, give each other shit. Mm-hmm. So in this instance, uh, the Marines, who are often guys that are going in with squads with big guns and you know, blowing away cartels or whatever. They don't necessarily like snipers because snipers spend all their time. They can wait days, sometimes even weeks, for a single shot to kill one guy. This kind of establishes that little bit of interplay between the military. And this this is where this movie shines, too. It's a lot more grounded. Way than, more grounded yeah, than most action films around that time. That In the 80s, a lot of action films, especially military stuff, did nuts. Yeah, they didn't focus on realism. <laughs> it was all about big, beefy dudes that... Pumping muscles. Yeah, and, and shooting guns <laughs> into the forest and blowing half of a fucking jungle away. Which is awesome in its own right. But. Which it, Yeah, it is awesome, but it's also not realistic. This movie gets a lot more into realism. It focuses more on that. I'm not going to say everything's legitimate. I don't no. know that much, honestly, about military tactics at the time. Mm-hmm. But it seems a lot more accurate to, to real life. It, it seems a lot more grounded. The characters are also more realistic. I mean, there are a couple scenes that get a little crazy, but... Yeah. 
While he's in this argument with this Marine, Beckett shows up, kind of helps him out. He kind of explains why the, the Marine doesn't like him. Because this dude's like a dick. He wants all his money, apparently. He tries to get all stored for money. Yeah, he's, he's like, I'll hold on to your wallet for you. Yeah. He ain't making it back, pretty much. Just like, fuck, dude. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that guy just seemed to want to take his money. Yeah. We never see him again, so it doesn't no. really matter. No, not really. Miller and him are talking, and uh, this is where they kind of start to introduce themselves to each other. This is where that tension really starts. Mm -hmm. Because, again, right off the bat, Beckett smells a glory hound, and he, and he can tell right away that this guy, he didn't make that shot. He's full of shit. Yeah, he, he, he can tell right off the bat this is not the kind of person that could have made a, a shot like that. Or you shoot a dude in a moving helicopter. They're about to start their mission the next or the next day. This is the first time where uh, Beckett also starts to show some of his less admirable traits. Mm -hmm. Beckett likes to keep the mission close to his own mind, and he's not and he's willing to change plans, which you know is necessary in a job like this. Obviously, you know uh, you know a guy that's been out in the you know jungle for years, basically. He knows it better than some jackass in D.C., yeah, right? That's pretty much what he says, too. Like, Yeah, but the problem with Beckett's character, and this is where I can kind of uh, critique him as a character, is he doesn't... He gets with, off on Miller right off the start because he basically just brushes Miller off. and mm -hmm. says, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Just do what I say. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Miller tries to pull rank on Beckett, but Beckett does not. <laughs> he kind of scoffs at that. Yeah, he's like, he's... dude, I've... I've been no. Doing this. Yeah, yeah. No. 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 You want to take point? Then go for it. Yeah. So the first change of plans that he makes, and he doesn't even run this by Miller, which I think is part of why Miller gets the bug up his ass, yeah. is he says, we're going to take a train, basically. We're not going to take a helicopter that's expected. And frankly, every time we use a helicopter, people Shit get goes killed. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Because these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. So they take a train into the jungle. Again, Miller tries to pull rank on him. Uh, this is also a really funny scene where they're, they're sitting in the train and uh, Miller is kind of going through his stuff. Miller's got this like cloth thing that's supposed to help him blend in and it, you know, it's kind of goofy looking. It is really goofy looking. And Miller's like, yeah, or uh, Beckett's all smiling. He's like, yeah, yeah, let me see it. And then he flings it out the window <laughs> and he, he's, all, he's like... <laughs> Ain't no time for being Peter Pan. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> we ain't got time to be fucking Peter Pan or some <laughs> shit like that. That, that really kind of cements the relationship. Miller mm -hmm. and Beckett do not like each other. They get off the train at a certain point. They're going, you know, again, we get lots of scenes of them just walking through the jungle. Mm -hmm. Like, that is one thing if you're uh, not a fan of uh, jungle scenes, you're probably not going to like this movie because yeah. it's 90% of the fucking movie. Mm -hmm. They're out there uh, moving around, and Miller gets snuck up on by uh, this one guy with a gun, but it turns out to be an ally they were meeting up with. Mm -hmm. And again, this is another moment where Beckett knew about this happening, and he knew that the, they were tracking them. He didn't let him know. Yeah, he didn't let Miller know. And Miller get, gets pissed off. Mm -hmm. Also, the dude asks for his sunglasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, his payment. Because this is another thing I think Miller, uh, or Beckett's trying to make a point of. Miller uh, doesn't, no has reason. no ju jungle training. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I guess they said he had urban training. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, trained with, like, the SWAT team or something. Something like that, yeah. And he uh, he doesn't even know the language, like, he doesn't even know Spanish. Or is it, is it Portuguese in Panama? I think it's either Spanish or Portuguese. But anyway, like, so he doesn't know the language. Beckett is making it a point to point out that he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of being like a hard-ass dad the whole time. It's kind of the yeah, vibe you get. there is kind of a... Yeah, Miller also kind of shows himself. Because Miller is kind of a stuffy dude. Like, again, he, he kind of sees this all as just, you know, something he can put, a lapel he can put on his, on his vest or whatever. But Miller really doesn't like this new guy. Beckett uh, has changed the direction that they're going. They've decided he's he has a reason to do this too. He says that you know the raid they're going is too obvious. There's too much other stuff going on. He, he makes a point of pointing out that often the jungle changes very very quickly, mm -hmm. and the guys in DC aren't there to find out about this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They're going in a completely different direction, and he also has a plan to go and take out. The CIA guy that's meeting oh, up. Yeah. yeah, like this has, uh, he calls them uh, targets of opportunity because mm -hmm. it's on their path. They meet up and they, Beckett points out this ex CIA guy that basically betrayed the, the US government and is working with these uh, drug cartels. And the reason Beckett does this is multiple reasons. One, obviously, this guy is a traitor to the US government, so he's a bad guy. They need to take him out. But he also does this because he, 
He doesn't believe Miller actually did that shot, and he's right. And he wants Miller to take a shot. He, he, he basically, proves that he's he's capable to be on this yeah. mission, pretty much. Yeah, Beckett basically says, like, we're not going into that mission if you can't make a shot. So they get set up for the shot. Miller's going to take out one guy, and then Beckett's got to take out the CIA guy, right? Yeah, so Miller's going to take out the CIA guy. Beckett's going to take yeah. out another guy. Okay. Unfortunately, Miller intentionally misses his first he shot. He shoots his head. And then the second shot... When he shoots again, I don't know if he intentionally, but he misses his first shot because he's panicking. And then the second shot, we don't actually know if he makes a shot, which mm -hmm. it turns out later on he didn't. And unfortunately, because of what he did, he gave away their location and it got one of their allies killed. One of the Portuguese guy's friend got killed. And at this point, they basically say, well, fuck you guys. You know, you got my friend killed. We're not working with you. Mm -hmm. And Beckett is not happy. Oh, okay. So this is where I found, I had it written down that he had 74 confirmed kills yeah i don't know what i think they had that conversation at this point yeah. in the jungle like after the ally guys leave uh one of the things they talk about uh beckett talks about when uh he makes changes for the direction they're going with the whole train is he had um an intel guy this minister or this preacher mm -hmm. priest out in this jungle this village mm -hmm. in the middle of the jungle had given him information on where to find alvarez and the other guy I don't know, generic uh, cartel guys. But unfortunately, because Miller let that CIA guy get away, he actually makes it to the village and they kill the priest. Miller gets in an argument with Beckett at this point. He says, no, nah, it could have been anybody. Beckett has his suspicions and we'll find out later on that it's actually true that it was the CIA guy that went back and killed him. We also have another uh, moment with uh, Rings where uh, they find out that, that he's following them. Rings, we actually get to find out about who he was. I forget the name of the guy, but uh, it turns out that he was uh, one of the, the Panama guys who were getting trained by Beckett himself, and he basically became a merc. The two of them have kind of been playing this game. This is where it's a really interesting scene. There's a sniper. There's two sniper fights, actually, mm -hmm. in it, and it's kind of like where the, the movie plays it off. It's almost like a chess game. What Beckett ends up doing is he ends up intentionally leaving bits of paper for Rings to follow. They also have another uh, random moment where they're resting because you know, Rings is kind of following them and they have to hide from him for a while. Uh, Beckett tells the story about... Uh, from Montana. Yeah, Montana. There's this, this fishing spot he likes to go to. And they end up having a conversation about that. Uh, Miller tells him that because uh, he went to college in that area, he says that that area was basically re renovated, changed up. Made into a high school. Uh, so at this point, once the, the preacher's dead, Miller and him have been arguing, ending well, the mission they, early. Yeah, yeah. And Beckett basically tells him, no, we're not done with the mission. We keep going. Miller does say, with no information, it's a suicide mission. And, and Beckett makes a, it says a line that's very telling about his character. He says, they're all suicide missions. Which <laughs> kind of gives you a mindset of who Beckett is. Beckett is the kind of guy at this point that doesn't really think he's, or care about making it out alive. He wants to get the mission done, and he doesn't care what it takes to do it. You also get, a, you get the feeling that he's looking for a place to die, too. Yeah, he does almost have that kind of mindset. Uh, it, it actually is a pretty unnerving m moment. Yeah, Miller, too, is also kind of having his moment. He's, he's He keeps talking more and more about leaving the mission and he, getting more hostile with Beckett. Yeah. He's losing his patience. At this point, too, uh, they've been leaving the trail behind and they've been getting followed by rings. And this is where Beckett has his probably his hard, most hardcore moment. He actually uses Miller... As bait. Like, he tells Miller, you know, eh, take a rest, man. I'll take, take first your, watch. Take your pillow one, yeah. Yeah, I'll take first watch. You just chill out, man. And he sets up this paper trail mm -hmm. for Rings to follow. Rings sets himself up to shoot him. And then he does this really interesting thing with... Uh, a knife in yeah, the water? Like this knife on a string with this, like, twig. And he starts having it kind of dips into the water and makes noise. So the sniper turns around, so he's not... And this, I guess this was a way to prevent him from killing Miller. So he turns around and then basically looks down the scope and Beckett shoots him and he kills Rings. At this point... Miller's pissed. Yeah, they get into a, like a straight up fight. Like at this point, he's like, you were going to, you know, you were going to get me killed. And like Beckett's like, nah, you were never in danger. At this point, they make it to uh, the big bad guy's home base where... It's like a, it's like a ranch yeah, it's, thingy. Uh, they call it a hacienda. Their plan is to shoot the two guys... Simultaneously. Yeah, they have to do it within 10 seconds of each other. Beckett tells Miller to go up into this uh, tool shed nearby mm -hmm. to hide there, and he's going to take out uh, Alvarez. No, 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 it wasn't Alvarez. It, it was, was the, other the, guy. the one with the long hair, if I remember. I yeah. don't know which one that was. but Well, anyway, so but they kill uh, one of the other guys, and then also they're going to try to take out the CIA guy because mm -hmm. he shows up and basically messes up the plan. Mm -hmm. Beckett is... 
about to take a shot, and unfortunately he's in a really bad position, mm-hmm. really exposed. So Beckett, unfortunately, Miller makes his shot. Beckett has to make a big distraction, and they both barely get away. Uh, and it was a pretty crazy scene, too, because Miller, like... Uh, Beckett does make his shot and kills the guy. Yeah, he does kill his guy. Beckett ends up shooting a few dudes, uh, causes this explosion, and they run back into the jungle. They run out into the jungle, they barely escape, and this is where Beckett and Miller have their big moment, because... Beckett's basically like, well, we're going to wait till night time and we'll go back. Miller goes off the fucking deep end. Miller basically says, fuck that. I'm not, I'm going home. I killed my guy. You're, we're done. We're <laughs> done. Beckett tells him, no, we're not done. The mission's not done. we got to take out that, that the CIA guy and we got to take out Alvarez. We have to. Mission's not done. And at this point, they start trying to kill each other, basically. Mm. Well, it's actually more of a one-sided thing. Yeah. Miller Miller tries to kill Beckett. Yeah, Beckett has a few moments. I think he could have taken him out. Yeah. But, uh, it's kind of implied that uh, Miller at this point has just snapped. He's not in a right state of mind. Mm-hmm. He's freaking the fuck well, out. he made his first kill, though, so, like... Yeah, that was part of it, too. It was his first kill. The guilt's kind of playing in on him. And he's having his moment where he's snapping, and, like, they're shooting at each other. They run around, they end up at this, like, abandoned building where Miller's basically like, well, just shoot me if you're going to shoot me, Beckett. And I'm out of bullets. You know, I'm out of bullets, and Beckett tells him, like, no, I'm not going to kill you, man. You're just, you're fine. Like, like it's going to be okay. And basically he says, you know... Th- I'm giving you an out. He basically tells him, like, look, man, uh, I, I think at this point Beckett realizes that uh, Miller is just, you know, he's a young kid, basically. He's, Miller is an older guy, like, I want to say in his mid-40s, probably? Mid-40s, mid to late 40s, I would say. Yeah, which is pretty old for a sniper. Realistically, he probably wouldn't still be a sniper mm-hmm. in the military. Bet the Miller is a young 20-something, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he's never killed anyone before, and this was just supposed to be a thing. Unfortunately, they have this, <laughs> probably this really, cr- this one really cringy line about where he's like, oh, you know, why does it hurt? And then he's like, no, you know, it only starts hurting more when it, that's not the worst, it's when it stops hurting or whatever. They start to hear the soldiers coming in because they heard them shooting and screaming at each other. Basically tells Miller, go, run. And he tells Miller to run. Miller runs into the into the jungle. Beckett tells him he's right behind him. Beckett makes gets his... Gets captured, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he gets captured. He surrenders. And uh, he's taken back to the Hacienda. I can't say that word. Yeah. <laughs> Hacienda. <laughs> and then they take him... To the shack where the priest was, I guess, or something like that. Uh, I think, no, uh, they took him to some room, but, uh, anyway, so right now, uh, at this point, Beckett gets captured, Miller goes back to help him, to save him. He grabs the bullet that he ejects. Yeah, he ejected a bullet. Because later, earlier, he says he's out of bullets, like, he's gonna be using that one bullet, which... Probably not a good idea since it's covered in dirt. Oh, yeah, man, I completely missed that. <laughs> but then again, it was raining, so maybe he just kept it out in the rain for a little bit and, you know, uh, got it all and dusted dude, it Dude, I, I completely missed that whole point. I what? got the whole the, the whole bullet thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I that completely went past <laughs> me. Holy <Jeez>. shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, then. Anyway, so he gets that bullet he got from Beckett that he... Ex- he let out of his gun before he was captured. When he was surrendering. Miller follows them back to the uh, place where a CIA guy at this point is torturing. He's torturing Beckett. And he's trying to get information on uh, what's going on. And he's the, fucking up his trigger finger. Yeah, he basically takes this twine and he starts wrapping it around. It's more of a wire more than anything. Well, yeah, it's like a steel wire. It's like yeah. steel like steel wool. With, with a fucking connected to a bamboo and he just twists the bamboo. Yeah, it's like steel wool that he like twists and yeah. it basically takes his finger off and he's torturing him. And then Beckett sees Miller's like scope flash and the rain luckily is going right now and uh, he basically uh, pretends to start, you know, telling... We forgot to tell him that he knife com- totally commandoed that fucking dude that he was supposed to kill. Oh yeah, earlier he took out Alvarez with a knife through <laughs> through a wall. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool, honestly. Pretty crazy. Really weird moment, but he got Alvarez and then uh, there's a setup with the, the CIA guy and he's got the... He basically uh, and it gets the CIA guy to get his head there and from what I was seeing from the scene it looked like Beckett wanted him to just shoot the two of them. I think it's mainly because he felt that he didn't have any reason to live anymore. Killing was all he had. He lost his finger. I think it had more to do with he just didn't think that he could make the shot without having it set up for him. Mm. 
he was willing to sacrifice himself for the mission. I don't know if it was necessarily that Beckett wanted to die. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Beckett's an interesting dude. There's a lot of under, unsaid things with his character, which mm-hmm. is pretty interesting about him, I guess. Luckily, Miller makes the shot, and he doesn't hit Beckett. He manages to hit CIA guy. He goes and he picks up uh, Beckett, and he kind of... Grabs his gun that uh, CIA guy drops. Yeah, and then uh, they run off. They manage to make it to their uh, evacuation point. Mm -hmm. It's at night, luckily. (laughs) Yeah. So they get to the chopper. (laughs) Uh, Miller basically tells him, you know, get to the helicopter, he's waiting... And then, cover you. Yeah, and then Be- or Miller starts to run to the helicopter after Beckett. Beckett sees a guy coming, though, and he manages to pull out this pistol, and he manages to actually shoot this dude that was going to shoot Miller without his trigger finger, mm-hmm. which is pretty impressive. And they manage to get away, and, and basically the movie ends with them in the helicopter, and he, uh, you know, they're kind of sitting there, and he kind of looks at his finger, and then, like, Miller says to Beckett, there's always Man- Montana. Montana. Yeah. Which I guess is sort of his way of saying, you know, there's more to life than just killing. Kind of how the movie ends. You don't really find out what happens after that. They leave it there. Yeah, I had mixed feelings about this movie. I, it was a lot better than we thought when we first got it. Remember you were like, oh, I got this bargain bin thing with four movies in it well, I'm, it's yeah. gonna be terrible and i'm we pretty watched sure the first one and we were like uh, that wasn't that bad well i looked at some of the other ones and I, i've seen the reviews for the other ones oh, so geez. i think any of those ones are gonna be that mm-hmm. but uh no the first one is pretty good very very show don't tell there's a lot of understated things i will say this about the acting i think beckett maybe should have had a little more emotion in his face uh, he did the stoic thing. Yeah, a no, too Billy well. Zane was probably the best actor yeah, in hands, that movie. Yeah, there weren't a lot of actors in the movie. Honestly, no. most of the guys are just kind of shot One from shots, far away. Yeah, yeah. Kind of just doing generic yeah. walk around with guns and getting shot. I noticed a couple times, though, when they were speaking Spanish, they kind of dubbed it over with Spanish because it didn't look like what they were saying yeah. matched with their words. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was really weird. <laughs> I also felt that the whole adding the, the, the rivalry with the ring fi- rings, rings was kind of unnecessary. Yeah. I think that rings... Would have been a better villain if we had just had him. Just no explanation as to who he was. Uh, maybe if B- Beckett had just said, no, nah, he's just some goo- dude that I've run into a few times and he's mm-hmm. tried to kill me. Been playing this cat and mouse thing for a while. Kind yeah. Of thing. I mean, I guess I get why they did it. It adds a more personal level to the fight. Mm-hmm. And again, that scene, in my mind, the second best scene. It's pretty good. Was between him and the other sniper. My Actually, I think the best scene, ironically, was actually the first one. Because it is a really tense mm-hmm. It, knew, it was definitely it was, it really was a good lot opening. of tension in that news in there. Yeah, because it's all set up. You get the breathing, and then there's the shot, and it hits, and then you know this chaos, madness, and they like they vanish into the jungle. Mm-hmm. Really cool. I mean, there were a lot of cool scenes. I'll say this though: other action scenes were a little kind of is where it kind of lost mm-hmm. the plot. Like when he's got a pistol and he manages to take out like four dudes with like semi-automatic rifles mm-hmm. was a little hard to believe. Mm-hmm. That's where the realism kind of went away a little bit. But other than that, I would say the movie was, you know, the action film, the action part was really great. The acting was good for an action film, right? Yeah. You're not expecting Shakespeare. So that was Sniper. It's really good. Where well, I'm looking forward to the other ones. <laughs> Tom Berenger's in all of them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and Billy Zane apparently is in the fourth one. That's he comes back. That's fucking weird. Yeah, but, like, the f- this first one came out in 93. The last one came out in... I think it was 2014. So, yeah, we're going to have Old Man Berenger. It's a Tremors movies all over again. Oh, I don't (laughs) don't say that. Oh, we should do Tremors. We're doing Tremors next. That's what we're doing next. We're doing Tremors. How many of them? We'll do the first movie. We could, okay. we could like, switch off between these yeah, two right. for a while and try okay. to figure out something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just I like trying to, movies. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do the Tremors movie next because I, I love this fucking movie. It's got Kevin Bacon in it. Anyway, so our song today is actually called Sniper. It's by a band known as Bullet Belt. Interesting little black metal band. Um, black Thrash is fucking weird. Yeah, man. we just heard them. Or, yeah. We were looking for a song, and that that showed up, and it made sense to me. So yeah. Check Sniper out, guys. I mean, seriously, you can find out at a bargain bin for five bucks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, all four of them. So, good movie. Um, anyway, I hope you guys are all having a good day. Hope- Tremors next time. Tremors next time. Exciting. <laughs> Love those movies. We watched all of them. Oh, God. Except that last one was terrible. Oh, we don't talk about that one. Yeah, well, Ice Age one was really mm. bad. It hurt my soul. Mm-hmm. It didn't have enough gummer. Fucking hipsters. Yeah. Needs more <laughs> gummer. <laughs> <laughs> I hopefully you guys are having a good night. Bye. Bye.